بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کوٹ آف دا ڈے انٹیلیجنس پلس کیریکٹر دیٹ از دا گول آف ٹرو ایجوکیشن آئی ایم ڈاکٹر الشپا رسول اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ول بی پریزنٹنگ انٹرنیشنل نیوٹریشن پروگرامز اینڈ آرگنائزیشن انڈر دا کائنڈ سپروویژن آف پروفیسر ڈاکٹر سائرہ افسل لرننگ آؤٹ لائنس ویریس انٹرنیشنل نیوٹریشن پروگرامز کمبیٹنگ ویریس نیوٹریشنل ڈیفیشنسیز their goals and achievements nutrition international unicef usaid recent advances in mcqs learning outcomes at the end of this presentation participants will be able to describe different nutritional programs across the globe their challenges achievements and contributions for combating various nutritional deficiencies under nutrition What is undernutrition? Undernutrition or malnutrition is a common feature of developing countries, especially in the lower age groups of the population. Protein calorie malnutrition, hypervitaminosis, A, anemia, and goiter are the most prevalent manifestations. Better sanitation, improved education, and economic development, including an increased production of more nutritious foods, will lead to the solution of the problem. International nutrition organizations, however, it may be a long while before these objectives are reached and in the meantime, some immediate measures must be taken to assess developing countries in the prevention of these conditions. The World Health Organization, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the United Nations Children Fund, UNICEF, Nutrition, Nutrition International, USAID and many others are cooperating towards this objective. Principal objective of organizations provide assistance to the member countries by helping them to identify their food and nutrition programs. Assist them in improving the nutritional situation, nutrition and food service to determine the nature and importance of these problems are conducted with the assistance of consultants. After recommendations have accordingly been made, these consultants may in some cases help the governments to implement them, practical measures to be taken may include the setting up of nutrition units in the ministries of health, the establishment of coordinating bodies at the highest governmental level, the creation of nutritional institutes, the training of national personnel to be employed in nutrition projects, the elaboration of a food policy at a national level, the promotion of a more efficient system of production and distribution of food products. Evaluation of the results of the service have been greatly facilitated by the establishment of guidelines drawn up by expert committees. Reports of these committees on the evaluation of nutritional status on protein requirements and on nutrient requirements to mention only the most recent ones have been published by the organizations. Major activities of nutritional organization, protein calorie malnutrition, protein rich food programs, supplementary feeding programs, milk conservation, applied nutrition programs, rehabilitation centers, development of food planning and activities in food technology and home economics and training. Protein calorie malnutrition, identification of the protein malnutrition in infants, children and women of childbearing age may lead to the development of several types of programs. Protein-rich food programs, the study and development of new sources of proteins and protein food mixtures is being pursued by these organizations under the guidance of the Protein Advisory Group. They have been closely associated with the whole development of protein-rich foods, advising the organization on their suitability, safety, nutritive value, and proposing tentative guidelines for processing and quality. Skim milk powder has been widely used in the prevention of protein calorie malnutrition nowadays. Supplementary feeding programs, Milk powder for free distribution in public health centers, communities, and schools is provided to a number of countries. Milk supply would be enriched with vitamin A and D. The distribution of milk for that matter in general is always associated with nutrition education activities carried out in schools and communities or through public health centers. Milk conservation the organizations have assisted many countries in the development of plants for pasteurizing, sterilizing, or drying milk. Breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding for about six months, then continuing breastfeeding while introducing complementary foods until your child is 12 months old or older. This provides your child with ideal nutrition and supports growth and development. Benefits to the baby, babies who are breastfed have a lower risk of asthma, obesity, type 1 diabetes, severe lower respiratory disease, acute otitis media, sudden infant death syndrome, gastrointestinal infections. Mothers who breastfed their babies have a lower risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure. 
Each packet contains 500 calories of therapeutic food. It's basically a mix of powdered milk, peanut butter, and micronutrients. Some have said it tastes like peanut butter frosting. Ready to use therapeutic food, Rutaf. Energy dense, mineral, and vitamin enriched food requires no preparation, specifically designed to treat severe acute malnutrition. Similar nutrient composition to F100. Therapeutic milk, soft, consumed easily, age of six months. Rutaf is not water based. Bacteria cannot grow in it, and it can be used safely at home without refrigeration and in areas where hygienic conditions are not optimal. Applied nutrition programs. Applied nutrition programs are conceived as a coordinated educational activities of the departments of agriculture, health, and education for the purpose of raising the nutritional level of local population in the rural areas. Their main characters are an educational effort directed towards an increased production and consumption of protective foods, the utilization of a number of channels simultaneously to reach all members of the family, primary school, agricultural extension services, public health centers, maternal and child health centers, social centers, women's clubs, and others. Coordination at all levels, national, regional, local, and between governmental and non-governmental agencies. The development of programs through a planned process of expansion, which includes the training of the personnel needed at all levels. Rehabilitation centers. The creation of rehabilitation centers for the treatment of secondary malnutrition. In these centers, children are fed and rehabilitated while some elements of food and nutrition Education are taught to the mothers. Development of food planning and activities in the food technology and home economics. Hypovitaminosis A, a program of vitamin A fortification of milk powder was initiated years ago and is rapidly expanding. Studies on its prevalence, epidemiology, and prevention have been undertaken. Endemic water, the prevention of this condition is of great concern to the organizations. Projects involving the iodation of the salt are presently underway. Studies on the prevalence of endemic goiter, its pathogenesis and controls are extensively carried out. Training. The growing interest shown by the garments and the ever-increasing number of nutrition projects require that more personnel must be trained in the field of the nutrition. Nutrition International, 1992, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, International Not-for-Profit Agency. Eliminate vitamin and mineral deficiencies in developing countries. Nutrition International Health, they derive for better, faster ways to get what they know. Works to those who need it most by multiplying impact without multiplying cost and complexity. How they help transforming lives through better nutrition. Working as an expert ally to governments, they combine a deep technical expertise with a flexible approach to deliver proven nutrition interventions at scale. Vitamin A. Vitamin A helps boost immunity and protects children under five from preventable diseases and blindness. Supplementing children under five with two doses of vitamin A per year reduces their chances of dying, reduces incidence of diarrhea, and incrementally reduces the odds of child stunting. Reduces morbidity and mortality in children affected by bad mortality, 12 to 24 percent reduction in overall risk of death, 12 percent reduction in death due to diarrhea, 15 percent reduced incidence of diarrhea, and 50 percent reduced incidence of measles. Iodized salt Iodine helps a child's brain develop properly. Iodine consumption is critical for pregnant women and children to ensure full brain development and protection from mental impairments. Adding iodine to salt reduces global iodine deficiencies. Iodine deficiency is most damaging during fetal development and in the first few years of a child's life. It is estimated that 38 million babies are born every year to iodine deficient mothers, missing out on the protection that iodine offers the growing brain, and a full 18 million are mentally impaired as a result. Iron. Iron is essential for healthy immune systems and sufficient energy levels. Iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency in the world, particularly affecting women and girls. Iron has a key role in early brain development, productivity, and safe pregnancies. Ensuring pregnant women have access to the iron they need to be healthy and have healthy babies. Fortifying staple foods with iron to improve the nutritional status of the entire populations. Improving adolescent girls' nutrition through supplementation and nutrition education. Folic acid. Ensuring that women have the access to folic acid through supplementation and fortification protects them from anemia and protects their babies from neural tube defects. 
Enriching staple foods with folic acid gets this micronutrient to those who need it the most. Nutrition International helps flour and cooking oil producers fortify their products with folic acid and other micronutrients and assists governments to the draft legislation to make it mandatory to fortify wheat flour with folic acid and iron. Zinc. Zinc and low osmolarity oral rehydration salts prevent child deaths due to diarrheal disease. Diarrhea is the leading cause of child mortality. Zinc and low osmolarity oral rehydration salts are an effective low-cost treatment that saves life. Build local capacity by training government health workers to deliver zinc, LORS, to record monitor zinc supplementation progress at local health centers. LORS may prevent 93% of the diarrhea-related deaths. Nutrition International in Pakistan, making nutrition the new tradition to improve the health of women and children living in Pakistan. Together with national and provincial governments, focus on improving access to much needed micronutrients through supplementation and fortification to improve the health of women and children. For every 10 children born in Pakistan, one will die before the age of five. Close to half of all children under five are moderately or severely stunted. 54% of children under 5 are vitamin A deficient. 62% of children are anemic. Some regions show up to 86% prevalence of childhood anemia. Nutrition International has been working in Pakistan since 2001 to improve the health of people in need, especially women and children, through better nutrition. In partnership with national and provincial governments, they work to improve and sustain the coverage of vitamin A supplementation for children under 5 across Pakistan, increase the coverage and utilization of zinc supplements or oral rehydration salts to manage childhood diarrhea. Ensure that young girls, pregnant women and mothers and children aged 6 to 24 months residing in remote rural areas of Pakistan receive improved nutrition and health care, improve effectiveness of national and provincial universal salt iodization program, support scaling up nutrition movement by the hosting the Sun Civil Society Alliance and Sun Academia and Research Network, reach 50 million people with fortified wheat flour and 145, 148 million people with fortified edible oil or ghee, improve the levels of iron, vitamin B12, folic acid among children and women. Digitizing Pakistan's All Fortification Program 2020-2022. They are building on the work of the Food Fortification Program in Pakistan funded with the UK aid from the UK government and the largest of its kind in the world. With support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, this project will institutionalize and sustain the gains of FF as part of the broader FFP 2.0 program, improving quality assurance and quality control measures to ensure availability of adequately fortified oil with vitamin Z and D. 96% of the tested edible oil from commercial oil mills in compliance with the National Fortification Standard, 136 partnerships established with all oil products units in Pakistan, 35 high check devices distributed to public sector labs and the labs at oil mills. According to Scaling Up Nutrition Movement Study, malnutrition costs Pakistan US dollars 7.6 billion or 3% of the GDP every year. Malnutrition rates in the country have been alarmingly high for decades. According to the National Nutrition Survey 2018, 51.5% children under 5 are vitamin E deficient and 62.7% are vitamin D deficient. The NNS also found that 27.3% Women of reproductive age are vitamin A deficient, while nearly 80% are vitamin D deficient. Vegetable oil is widely consumed in Pakistan, making it an ideal vehicle for fortification. Yet, since 1965, when the government made fortification mandatory, compliance has been weak and the sale of the unfortified or inadequately fortified oil has continued. NI is trying to improve quality assurance and quality control processes to ensure all edible oil in the market is adequately fortified. UNICEF, 1964, New York, USA, United Nations Agency, 192 countries and territories. Uh, UNICEF's activities include providing immunizations and disease prevention, administrating treatment for the children and mothers with HIV, enhancing childhood and maternal nutrition, improving sanitation, promoting education and providing emergency relief in response to the disasters. <laughs> UNICEF Early Childhood 
nutrition programs aim to prevent all forms of malnutrition by protecting, promoting, and supporting breastfeeding. UNICEF strengthens breastfeeding counseling and support and advocates for maternal protection and other protective policies to protect mothers and babies from marketing practices that undermine the breastfeeding. UNICEF works to strengthen the national legislation on the International Code of Marketing of Breast Milk Substitutes and Related World Health Assembly Resolutions. Improving first foods and feeding practices for the infants and young children. UNICEF promotes access to the nutritious, safe, affordable foods and for children aged 6 to 23 months and 3 to 5 years. Where nutritious foods are out of reach, reach, UNICEF supports the use of multiple micronutrient powders and fortified foods to improve the quality of children's diet. Providing micronutrient supplementation and deworming. UNICEF helps deliver vitamin A supplementation, deworming prophylaxis, and iron-containing supplements to children under 5 in areas where nutrient-poor diets prevail and where micronutrient deficiencies are common. Promoting healthy food environments, UNICEF helps governments adopt policies that foster healthy food environments, improve the availability and affordability of nutritious foods, and safeguards children from consuming unhealthy foods and beverages. This includes ensuring that such policies are free from commercial influence. Nutrition and care for children with wasting. Guided by the Global Action Plan on Child Wasting, UNICEF supports governments in scaling up the early detection and treatment of children with wasting in health facilities and communities by using evidence to inform early detection and treatment, strengthening health worker capacities, expanding early detection and treatment services, integrating nutrition supplies within national health system, making RUTAF more affordable and sustainable. Maternal nutrition, nutrition before pregnancy. UNICEF supports programs that make nutritious foods more accessible and affordable, uses behavior change communication to promote nutritious diets and shift social norms and practices. Also support large-scale food fortification programs such as salt iodization and the fortification of wheat flour, rice, cooking oil with vitamins and nutrients to improve the quality of women's diets. Nutrition during pregnancy. UNICEF promotes healthy eating, micronutrient supplementation, deworming prophylaxis, weight gain, monitoring, physical activity, and breast to improve the nutrition of pregnant women. Nutrition while breastfeeding. UNICEF promotes healthy eating, micronutrient supplementation, physical activity, and the nutrition of breastfeeding women. Nutrition of adolescent mothers. UNICEF supports counseling services, micronutrient supplementation, and the use of balanced energy protein supplements where appropriate. Innovations for maternal nutrition. UNICEF tests the innovations for improving the woman's nutrition during pregnancy and breastfeeding. As part of this work, we aim to shape markets to help increase access to low-cost, high-quality micronutrient supplements for women and to derive product innovation for nutrition. This also includes exploring innovative ways to deliver nutrition services to the women in low-cost, uh, field-friendly methods to access micronutrient deficiencies in women. Key plan results of 2021. 250 million children are reached with services to prevent stunting and other forms of malnutrition. 50 million adolescents are reached with services to prevent anemia and other forms of malnutrition. 6 million children are reached with services for the early detection and treatment of wasting. U.S. aid from the American people. In 1961, independent agency of the United States federal government. Washington, D.C., primarily responsible for administrating civil, foreign aid, and development assistance, budget $27 million, billion. USAID. USAID's approach, the agency investments addresses the prevention of all forms of undernutrition with emphasis on those that target the 1,000-day window of opportunity. Now it's time for the recent updates. A hidden side of the COVID-19 pandemic in children, the double burden of undernutrition and the overnutrition. The COVID-19 pandemic has deteriorated the key determinants of health and caused major upheavals around the world. Children, although less directly affected by the virus, are playing a heavy price through the indirect effects of the crisis, including poor diet, mental health impact, social isolation, addiction to screens, and lack of schooling and healthcare, particularly among the vulnerable groups. This paper is aimed at discussing the potential impact of this pandemic of, on child's nutrition and lifestyle. Preliminary data from the literature and from our survey show significant disruptions in the nutrition and lifestyle habits of children. 
while undernutrition is expected to worsen in the poor countries, obesity rates could increase in the middle and high income countries, especially among precarious groups, widening the gap in health and social inequalities. The real impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on child children extends well beyond that of a viral infection. This crisis has public health implications that could have lifelong consequences on children. It requires effective and targeted measures, mainly for vulnerable children and households, to guarantee children's basic rights for optimal nutrition, health, and development. Is women empowerment a pathway to improving child nutrition outcomes in, in a nutrition-sensitive agriculture program? Evidence from a randomized control trial. Nutrition-sensitive programs in the low- and middle-income countries often aim to improve the child nutrition outcomes in part by empowering women. Although previous studies have found cross-sectional associations linking women's empowerment and child nutritional status, there is a limited empirical evidence supporting the hypothesis. We tested the hypothesis using two waves of data from a cluster, cluster randomized control trial of a nutrition-sensitive agricultural program with structural equation models. We examined whether four domains of the women's empowerment Purchasing decisions, healthcare decisions, family planning decisions, spousal communication mediated the program's impact on reducing wasting and increasing hemoglobin among children who were 3 to 12 months old at the start of the two-year program. We found that improvements in the women empowerment in the domains of spousal communication, purchasing decisions, healthcare decisions, and family planning decisions contributed to the program's impact on reducing wasting with the largest share being attributed to the spousal communication. Improvements in women's empowerment, empowerment did not contribute to the increase in hemoglobin. These findings provide the first evidence from a randomized control trial that women's empowerment is a pathway by which a nutrition-sensitive program can improve child waste. Programs that aim to improve child nutritional status should incorporate interventions designed to empower women. Now it's time for the MCQ session. A pregnant woman comes to your clinic after suffering from anemia. Fortification of wheat flour with DASH can help to reduce anemia in women and neural tube defects in infants. A. Iodine. B. Iron. C. Vitamin A. D. Folic acid. Or is it E. Zinc? Iron. No, it's D. Folic acid. A nutritional survey is conducted in Pakistan. According to the survey, what percentage of women 15 to 45 years are vitamin D deficient? B? It's D, 80%. Nutritional International claims that supplementing children from 6 a meter to 59 meter of 50, 59 months of age with two doses of vitamin A per year reduces their mortality due to diarrhea to which percentage? 3% reduction in death due to diarrhea, B, 6% reduction in death due to diarrhea, C, 9% reduction in death due to diarrhea, D, 12% reduction in death due to diarrhea, E, 5% reduction in death due to diarrhea. 12? Yes, it's 12. A micronutrient is essential for brain development and protection from mental and impairments in pregnancy and childhood. Which steps should be taken at the community level to reduce mental impairments? Fortification of wheat flour with vitamin E, fortification of vegetable oil with vitamin D, fortification of table salt with iodine, fortification of wheat flour with iron and folic acid, E, fortification of table salt with iron. D. It's C, fortification of table salt with iodine. Apart from all age groups, much emphasis for nutrition is focused on 1,000-day window of opportunity because it is the most critical time for positive impact on a child's cognitive and physical development. What is that period? Last three years of mother before birth, from pregnancy to second birthday of child, first three years of life, D, first five years of life, E, first 10 years of life. C. B? Yes, it's B. Zinc and low osmolarity ORS proves to be reducing diarrhea-related deaths. How much LO ORS can prevent diarrhea-related deaths? A, 33%, B, 53%, C, 73%, D, 93%, or is it E, 63%? D. Yes, it is D, 93%.
which of the following micronutrient given at community level, either with fortification or given in oral capsule form at a mass level to children under five helps to reduce stunting and blindness? A, vitamin A, B, vitamin B, C, vitamin C, D, vitamin D, or is it E, vitamin E? A. Yes, it is A, vitamin A. Root of stands for ready to use therapeutic foods and contains 500 calories. What are they meant for? Fulfilling the nutri nutrient deficiencies of adults at a community level can be given to children under age of six months as a breast milk substitute. Used for children six to 59 months for treating mild nutritional deficiencies. Used for children six to 59 months for treating severe acute nutritional deficiencies. E used as a vegetable substitute. D. D. Yes, it is D. <sighs> Which of the following organizations activities include providing immunizations and prevention, enhancing maternal and child nutrition, treatment of children and mothers with HIV, and providing emergency relief in response to the disasters? A, WHO, B, UNICEF, C, FAO, D, Nutrition International, or is it E, US Aid? UNICEF? Yes, this is UNICEF. A mother is reluctant to breastfeed her child. You should tell the mother about the benefits of breastfeeding and raise awareness by informing her that mothers who breastfeed their children are at a lower risk for A, breast cancer, B, ovarian cancer, C, breast and ovarian cancer, D, colon cancer, or is it E, cholesterolemia? A. This is C, breast and ovarian cancer, both. This is the key of the MCQs. Thank you, everyone. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.